I saw a film today, oh boy, about a lucky man who made the grade. Of course, that's John Lennon from A Day in the Life. I'm sort of feebly trying to echo that song, which is a beautiful song. I am walking up here on Green Mountain again, a morning hike. So far, I've been about two miles, mostly uphill, and now I'm leveling out. Feels good to be out here in the morning. Temperature around 64 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's just beautiful. And I've seen a few other hikers and bicyclists, and it's just really nice to come up here. Very peaceful and quiet, relatively quiet up here. I'm um, going to talk about a movie I saw last night. So this will be a little bit longer. It won't be a short, but so for whoever's interested, if you're not, it's okay. No big deal. I watched a 1979 film called Caligula. Caligula. This was a movie that came out that year, took several years to make, it was a very expensive production, the most expensive independent film ever made at, at that time. I think still is. I'm not sure. But starred Malcolm McDowell, had some other great actors, Peter O'Toole, John Gielgud, Helen Mirren. And it takes place around 38 AD, Common Era. So just a few years after the year that supposedly Christ was crucified and died and resurrected, if you believe all that. Fine with me if you do. Um, <clears throat> Caligula is a story about a, a crazy man who becomes into power. And I see a parallel with our country today. Two somewhat crazy people aspiring to be the president of the United States. And I think one is much crazier than the other and much more dangerous potentially than the other. We've seen what four years of Trump did and yeah, they weren't all positive, great things, but you know, he, there were some positive things. The main thing that stands out that were positive is the country was not at war anywhere. Uh, I'm not saying he didn't do some military drone strikes. I mean, I know, the, I know he did, but there was no active war like we have right now, engagement with a huge amounts of money that America doesn't have to give away, but it's doing it anyway, paper, fiat, currency. Giving it away to Israel now, as if the Palestinians are the bad guys and we got to crush them. Like they don't have rights to, they're not being abused to. Why are they attacking Israel? I mean, you might research it a little bit and there's some good reasons why they're really fed up and pissed off about it, being mistreated as they have been. But I'm not trying to take a position to defend Israel or the Palestinians. I'm just saying America has been involved in that the last several years, this year in particular, and in Ukraine. Another instance where the United States planned this out to engage Russia in a war to seek to drain their military, to weaken their military so that they cannot have any influence anywhere else in the world, like America does. You know, United States has military bases in a, a thousand military bases around the world in over 120 different countries and way bigger and more powerful, military speaking, militarily speaking, than Russia. And so this was a, a war that did not need to happen, but the Democratic Party has become the warmonger party. They feed the elites, the military industrial complex, and all the other big companies, oil, big pharma, and they control so much of it through the media. They control the public opinion as to what's going on through the media. And there's only one outlet that opposes them, that's Fox News whatever you think about them. I'm not really crazy about them either, but all the other major news outlets on television at any rate and print media and magazines, they're all con owned by three ma main corporations. And they are funneling down their views and opinions and ideas to people to absorb. And so in the movie Caligula, he's, he's a young man who suddenly by murdering, he doesn't actually do it himself. He has a one of his cohorts, murder the emperor, an old man who's very sick and feeble. So he goes ahead and kills him, and he becomes the new emperor. But as the saying goes, the emperor has no clothes. Caligula is just a base, immature, self-centered, very cruel person. He doesn't care about the, the people of Rome or his country. He cares only about his own ego, his self-fulfillment, his self-gratification, and he commits horrible, atrocious acts of violence, murdering people, 
base things like having sex with women that are, you know, in, in gross ways. I don't want to go into it all. The movie, when it first came out in 1979, was X-rated. There was a lot of pornography in the film because the publisher of Penthouse Magazine, which if you don't remember or know, it was similar to Playboy Magazine, but it, the pictures in Penthouse were definitely more erotic and sensual and geared towards sex than Playboy magazine was. And the owner and publisher, Bob Guccione, financed this movie. And when the movie was filmed and made and produced, after the fact, he went back in and incorporated a bunch of pornography into the movie, especially the scenes where they're having orgies, which they did in Rome. We know that. We know that from writings and historians tell us they did. And homosexuals were kind of in favor back then. It was not a big deal for men to engage in sex with young boys or women with women or anything like that. It was very accepted. And, and it's become more accepted today. More People are more tolerant today than they have been over the last several thousand years. And in the film, the original film, I saw the original film and it's pretty vulgar. So you can still find that, it's available. Not maybe on streaming, I don't know, but by DVD you can find it. And this new version that came out I watched yesterday is three hours long. They give some of the history and background at the beginning of the film. And there are a few sexual orgy scenes, but they're really toned down. They're more what would be an R-rated film today. Probably not X-rated or NC-17. They'd probably be R-rated. But the film is hard to watch because it just shows the ugliness of this leader how he's feeding his own desires and his appetite, his lust for power, that he can do anything. He's the emperor, he can do anything. And the analogy I saw was that there were certain qualities of him that I saw in Trump when he first came into power in 2016, and certainly qualities I see in Kamala Harris, a little different with her, because she hasn't really been on the scene that long to really observe and see how she's going to be. But there are lots of videos on YouTube and probably other places too. But on YouTube, there are lots and lots and lots of videos of her showing how she actually is in real life. Much different than the image portrayed through the media, which is very much in control of her image, trying to show her now, even though she's very disliked just a couple months ago, very un unliked by the public, and she's accomplished nothing as vice president, except she was put in charge of the border, trying to slow down the influx of people illegally coming in the country through the Mexican-American border. And she did nothing, never even visited the border for the longest time, never even went there. And over 11 million illegal people, let's call them illegal because they've entered the country illegally. Not all rapists, murderers, and thieves, no, no. That's wrong to say that. Mostly people that are poor, desperate, they're trying to come to this land America where they've heard there are great opportunities and whatever. So I'm not faulting people for trying to come in this country, but it has become a problem economically and socially as well, politically. And so Kamala Harris to me comes off as really a buffoon uh, a person without any substance, without any moral integrity or character, any substance. And very much like Caligula in the film Caligula, played by Malcolm McDowell. He did a brilliant job, I gotta say. So the point of all this is we get this so-called predictive programming, these messages in our films, especially in movies, television shows sometimes too. X-Files was a good one. Um, that are telling us about things that are really going on that many times seem too far-fetched to really believe. They seem exaggerated. But in essence, they are telling us this is happening. Pay attention. And again, as I watched the film Caligula, it really sank in that these are scary times because whoever wins that election, it, it doesn't really matter that much. It's probably not going to be so great for this country at large and the people in this country are certainly not for the people around the world that look to the United States as a major influence 
and kind of a role model, if you want to call it that. Uh, we're in perilous times today, folks. And the only thing I can really say in closing is that we all have to take responsibility for our own life, our own experience, and be accountable for what we're contributing in the world, whether it's positive or negative. And really examine that and ask ourselves every day, am I here to make the world a better place or to tear it down? So that's all I have this morning. Best to you all. So long.